Hello and welcome to my May wrap up. The most exciting thing that's happened this month by far is that I spent half a day um, adding an extra foot to my tripod. Usually I have to um, move this clock and pick up some bricks and lay the bricks and then try and align the tripod on the bricks and then shift the bricks if I want to move the tripod. Oh, challenge. Um, but now I have a very snazzy extra tool tripod which has made this whole thing much more pleasant. A bit of a bumper month for me, I've read nine books this month and I also finished vetting all of the content on charreads.com. Oh, this thing is, this has been getting me down for months because I pulled in a lot of the data for, of all of the books I've read into this website, um, including like stuff like their summary and their published date. Um, but the summary would include some like random crap or the published date would be like for that edition, not the original published date of the book. And I needed like high quality covers for all of the books and it's taken hours upon hours, but it's finally done. So now I can shout about this website. It still has like a missing a bunch of features, um, but now all of the content on it is great. So um, feel free to check that out. Let's start talking about the books. Um, so the first book I read was The Science of Storytelling by Will Storr. Um, I actually read this mostly last month, uh, mostly in the month of April. I read it quite slowly um, because I wanted to just kind of like highlight it and pick it up every now and then. Um, and it was really good. If you if you want to write um, stories but don't know where to start, I'm sure there are like better, more well-known, more well-renowned books about how to write well. Um, please leave them in the comments if you if you have recommendations because I've never read any before besides this. Uh, but I did think it was good and I filmed a video talking specifically about it so obviously we'll link that down below as well. The next book I read was I Love Dick by Chris Kraus. Um, this came out in 1997 and Dick is a man, Chris is a woman, just, <laughs> just to establish that initially. Um, so this is a kind of like semi-autobiographical memoir um, about well, by this woman called Chris, and um, it's about how she and her husband, Sylvia, go and have dinner with this guy called Dick one time, and then she is obsessed with Dick, um, and <laughs> Sylvia kind of like goes along with it because he likes that she's getting passionate about something again, but they they write like hundreds of letters to Dick without sending them. It's more, it's like an art thing. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's known as, as like a big like feminist work because it is about women having like desire and having agency. Um, but I actually found it quite insufferable. The first half was all of these letters, which was just kind of like very interesting in like a perverse dynamic way. Like it was just quite strange to see this play out. But then the second half is her having like divorced her husband and just like going around and, and being a bit sad and, and still wanting to, to fuck dick. It's also got like a lot of like pretentious stuff in it, like very like media theory, kind of like art world critique sort of stuff, um, which I don't particularly enjoy. Also really strange, Chris Krause is the exact age of my mother. Um, and that's weird to think about because my mum was really cool like she was a fashion designer in Paris she's like as cool as mums can get um and she had me in 1993 and she had her first son in 1991 and this is this was about the period of like 93 94 but I can kind of imagine um what my mum's life was like pre-children and how it was kind of like you have this group of art friends and you know you go to cocktail parties all the time and I can just kind of weirdly picture it but it is strange that it's, I'm picturing it as like a whole generation above me instead of something that is more contemporary. There are elements of it I really liked uh, but I did find a lot of it like just self-indulgent to a degree that was off-putting. The next book I read was uh well it wasn't a book it was a short story The Machine Stops by E.M. Forster. Um, I <laughs> Uh, read this years ago and I made a video about it years ago and someone commented on that video being like are we not living through this right now and I was like oh yeah I should reread this um it's maybe my favorite short story no it's not it's one of my favorite short stories um and it, I made a video going into more detail about it because it prompted a whole load of different thoughts very abstract in that video um so yeah this is great I would recommend it 
The next thing I listened to was Range by David Epstein. Um, this came out in 2019 and it's about like the power of being multidisciplinary. Um, I didn't like it too much because I don't think it really had a lot to say. Um, it was it was kind of like a, a scientific book um, with, with loads of like case studies. Um, but it was basically saying like, there are a lot of people in the world that are specialized and that's good. We need specialized people. But also um, for, for some people, it's really important to explore a lot of things and kind of like cross pollinate between different um, industries. And that it's kind of like essential that we have them in society as well. Um, but yeah, it's not really about having range. It's about having had range before you specialize, um, which is a shame because I thought it would kind of be about like empowering me and my um, having five completely different jobs and saying that that's okay. But it was like, no, have five completely different jobs and pick one, but use the skills and knowledge that you've accrued from the other things um, to make it better. So I just found it like, a bit boring. The next book I also listened to is an audiobook, but then I picked up a physical copy because I thought so good. Um, this is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, it came out in 2018 um, and it's obviously about habit building. It's the best book about habit building I've ever come across. Um, he goes through it in four different laws of, of habit like making and breaking. The first law is make it obvious. The second law is make it attractive. The third law is make it easy and the fourth law is make it satisfying and it's one of those things where if you if you have the drive to change something in your life um this will give you the tools to to cement it um it was it was just very good and it worked really well as an audiobook so i think everyone should read this i think we'd all be better people if we were more purposeful about um the habits that we we have in our lives um and yeah great 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 the next book I listened to was A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Um, yeah, very buzzy. I actually wasn't going to um, pick this up, but then I watched a video that um, Lena Norms made, I'll leave a link, um, about like rereading all of the Hunger Games and her like enjoyment of that. And I was like, oh, that was, the, that was, that was a good time, wasn't it? When we were all into the Hunger Games. And then um, I brought it up to my boyfriend and he was like, you know what, I never, I've never seen any of the films. He'd only read the first two books. So just over four consecutive nights, we watched all of the films and it just got me so ramped up. Also, I didn't realize until we were like a third of the way into the last film, I never actually saw the last film. <laughs> I just kind of assumed I had because I remembered what happened. That got me so amped up for it. So I was like, as soon as it comes out, why not? I'm gonna audiobook it. I'm glad I did because it's actually quite a long book. Um, and some people have said that it's just, just far too long for what it contains. Like it should have been a lot shorter. Um, so really glad I audio booked it for that because it was quite pleasant. A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is the prequel to the Hunger Games, which takes place during the year of the 10th annual Hunger Games. So real Hunger Games is the 74th. Um, so it's way back and it is when Coriolana Snow, the pres future president of Pan Am is the, um, is a, a teenager and he, well, things happen. Um, but yeah, it's about Coriolanus and I really wanted to love it, but I just had a lot of issues with it. So I made a full video talking about that if you want to spill some tea. Next book I have, I've read this three times this year. <laughs> this is The Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. Um, my life has actually really changed in the last month. So I got a creative coach, a life coach. I know a lot of people think that's bullshit, but it's actually, been very clarifying um, because I do a lot of different things and I'm not satisfied and I want to pick one thing to focus on um, and I did I picked one thing to focus on with the help of this life coach which is effectively like an entirely new business um, so I'm kind of in the very early stages of thinking about what I want that to be and I decided to re-listen I actually listened to the audiobook I've never read this physical copy I just like having it around um, of perennial seller to just have that that mindset um, going into to thinking about this business. So it's a really radical approach to product design, development and marketing, which is based around the idea of you don't really care about short term success, but you're focused on long term success. You want to make a thing that is going to be around for a long time or have like an increasing um, return. And I think it's just such a strong argument and it's something that I've been thinking about 
and the context of Charis for, for, for months, even actually before I first read it. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been thinking about doing a video where I just kind of review this book, but mostly talk about my YouTube stats and why I do YouTube the way I do in terms of this kind of you video structure, um, which is actually more for the sort of perennial aspect of it um, than for like views and subscribers. So uh, and would you be interested in that? Because I'd love to make it. Please let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. The next book I read is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. Um, I heard about this book when it first got the publishing deal actually because uh, Nisha Dolan used to be in a book club that I was in. She left before I joined but it's all like uh, debating society people from Trinity College. This has been compared to Sally Rooney a lot um, and I'm not one to, to do something different so in my review of this book I made a, a video about it. Um, I do quite... Um, closely compare it to conversations with friends. I was too excited to read it that I didn't even wait for the paperback and that's like big for me. Um, but unfortunately it didn't blow me away in the way I wanted it to. Um, I found the main character quite aggravating, her perspective quite aggravating. Um, but yeah, you can, you can watch the video to hear more about that. And the final book I read this month was The Silk Roads by Fr Peter Frankopan. Um, this is a just a mammoth of a book about uh, the history of the Silk Road trade route, um, so uh, a lot about like empire and war and commodities um, and it was it was really interesting just having like a focus on the Middle East which is an area that we're not taught about a lot in, well not a, at all in, in school and he's kind of making the argument that like the Silk Roads were a centre of of the, the world's power and are going to be again um, which is, eh, we'll see. Um, uh, I did a full review of this one as well if you'd like to watch that. So, oh, that is the pile of books for this month. I'm actually going hoarse from how many videos I've made today. I hope you've had a wonderful May. Um, if you've read like a particular book that you thought was great, let me know down below because I want to hear about it. Um, and yes, I shall see you soon for more videos. Ta-ra.